President Biden gets to avoid the courtroom. A special counsel has found that President Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials after his vice presidency when he was a private citizen. But unlike former President Donald Trump, the council will recommend against criminal charges. Here to break down the differences in these two cases and what it means for the upcoming election, we've got our very own Rick Newman. Hey, Rick. Hey, guys. Uh, well, this was uh, technically a good finding for Biden, but it turned into kind of a political disaster uh, because the main takeaway here is that this prosecutor described Biden as an elderly man with poor memory. I, I think we're going to be hearing that phrase uh, over and over again until November. Um, so what this finding actually did is, uh, I mean, it basically exonerated Biden. Um, it did find that he did have cl bring uh, classified material to his home after uh, he left the vice presidency in 2017. But um, it basically said it could have been an innocent mistake. Um, and importantly, when prosecutors uh, or when the government confronted Biden about this, he fully cooperated. He said, come on in, look around. And he, he in no way um, caused any problems. The difference between Biden and Trump uh, is that uh, Trump uh, knew that he took classified material. He showed it to people. And then when the government said, hey, we think you have uh, this top secret or even more classified material, um, Trump tried to hide it. Um, so that is why the charges against Trump include several um, counts of obstructing justice uh, and he may even have destroyed evidence such as uh, security uh, camera footage at Mar-a-Lago where all these documents were held. So Trump basically did not cooperate and he tried to prevent the government from getting those documents back, whereas Biden said, just come on in and get them. So there's a big difference here. But uh, look, I mean, in campaign years, voters often don't notice uh, subtleties and they just kind of um, notice the main takeaway here. And the, the main takeaway here politically is that this prosecutor said Biden's memory stinks. It's certainly a worrisome year for Democrats and Biden supporters heading into the 2024 election. But Rick, let's take a step back because voters are starting to maybe shift their tone just a little bit ahead of the November election. There was a new poll out from NBC pointing to the fact that now when people look back at Trump's presidency, they're actually more optimistic or positive about what he did during his first term than they were when he left office. What do you think this then tells us just about how voters are starting to shift their thinking and any implications here for, for the 2024 results? Well, let's remember the Trump presidency was bifurcated. I mean, there uh, was a generally calm period for the economy if you put Trump's trade wars aside um, leading up to 2020, and then there was COVID. Um, so uh, Trump lost in 2020, I think it's fair to say, partly because people thought he did a lousy job handling the, the, uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, but, you know, voters are right when they think back to if you just go back to the pre-COVID days, they are right. There was, there was no meaningful inflation back then. Um, gas prices were lower than they are today. That's not really because of anything Trump did. Um, he actually inherited a pretty good economy from President Obama. And those trends just continued under Trump until COVID. Um, and now we know, you know, Biden came in and here, all of a sudden, Biden gets stuck with inflation that goes all the way up to 9%. So vo voters are kind of right about that. I think where people might be making the mistake is they attribute the, you know, what they remember about a pretty good economy under Trump. They think that was Trump's doing. I mean, this is always the case is, you know, there's this big question, does the president deserve blame or credit for what happens uh, in the economy under his watch? And the answer is generally not really. But that's not the way it works in reality. So that is a big problem for Biden. It's inflation. But the trend is Biden's friend at this point. I mean, we have inflation coming down and the economy is actually improving. And look at the stock market rally we've had uh, during the last few months. I mean, that's terrific, too. But voters are not giving Biden credit for that yet. And I don't know if they will. No, Rick, you make a good point here. And I mean, outside of us in the media and reporting landscape, waking up with a cold sweat in the middle of the night, wondering whether or not the president tweeted something that might piss off <laughs> another country. 2019 felt pretty good, <laughs> but now we got to think about what this investor mindset is going to look like going into uh, this general election year too, which you started to lay out. Is, is there any clear indication as to whether or not either side will wade into the campaign discourse and using the stock market in one way or the other? Yes, there's a there's a lot at stake for investors here uh, in this election. I mean, getting beyond, uh, you know, which president 
is flubbing his, or excuse me, which candidate is flubbing his lines worst? And, you know, who's the least senile between Biden and Trump? I mean, um, the biggest thing coming up is the expiration of the 2017 Trump tax cuts, uh, which expire for individuals at the end of 2025. So the next president is going to be the one who uh, either signs uh, a, a, tax, a tax cut extension into law or effectively presides over a de facto tax hike. Um, and, it, you know, there's a big question of, let's say Biden wins. Um, I think if Biden wins, I think there's a good chance he would not extend those tax cuts for wealthy Americans. Uh, and those are the people uh, who are most be benefiting from the stock market rally right now and the ones most likely to buy stocks. So that is just one issue. There are many others on trade, other types of policies, what to do about the gigantic uh, national debt. And we're going to be talking about this a lot, guys. We will. <laughs> what do we have? Uh, 10 months till the election? Nine months I think till the it's election? Too much time. We're, we're inside nine, I we're think. We're inside nine. There we go. I know. Halfway through February already. It's hard to keep track. All right, Rick, thanks so much for breaking all that down. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys.